Hello guys, in this video we are going to talk about the maxillary permanent first molar. So here we have the left maxillary permanent first molar. So we are going to talk about its morphology and anatomical structure of maxillary permanent first molar. So this is the largest tooth in the maxillary arch and it is present at the sixth position from the midline and the both side right and left and this tooth it has three roots so two on the buccal side and one on the palatal side and also it has four cusps so this is the mesobuccal cusp and this is the distobuccal cusp and this is the mesolingual cusp and this is the distolingual cusp and this mesolingual cusp is the largest cusp so we can study this tooth from the four, five, five surfaces. So here is the buccal surface and also we can also study from the lingual sur surface or palatal surface. And we can also study from the mesial surface and also from the distal surface as it lies away from the midline. And we can also study from the occlusal surface. This is the occlusal surface. So let's start with the chronology. So the initiation of calcification is start at the birth so the calcification calcification start during birth and the enamel is completed at three to four years and this tooth erupt at the age of six years that's why this tooth is also called six years molar as it erupt during six years and the root is completed at nine to ten years now let's see the dimensions of permanent maxillary first molar so the cervical occlusal length of the crown is 7.5 mm so from the cervical line to the occlusal this is 7.5 mm and length of the root is 12 mm in the buccal side so from the cervical to the tip of the root it is 12 mm and this is on the buccal side while on the lingual side it is 13 mm the length of the root is 13 mm so from the cervical line to the tip of the root it is 13 mm on the lingual side and the mesial distal diameter is 10 mm so from the mesial side to the distal side this is 13 mm while the mesial distal diameter at the cervix is 8 mm so here is the cervical area and the diameter of from the mesial to the distal at cervical area is 8 mm also the buccolingual diameter is 11 mm so so the buccolingual so from the buccal to the lingual side the diameter is 11 mm so from here to here this is 11 mm while the buccolingual diameter of crown at the cervix is 10 mm so again on the cervical area this is 10 mm from the buccal to the lingual now let's see this tooth from the buccal aspect as it lies near the cheeks so it is called buccal aspect so crown is roughly trapezoid in shape so if we draw the outline of the crown it resembles to the trapezoid shape more or less so this is roughly trapezoid in shape and all the four cusps are visible so if we place this tooth in the anatomical position then you can see all the four cusps this is the mesiobuccal cusp this is the distobuccal cusp and here is the mesiolingual cusp and here tiny amount of distolingual cusp so all four cusps are visible also the mesial outline is flat from the cervical margin to the contact area so the mesial outline of the crown this is flat from the cervical area to the mesial contact area so this is flat and height of contour is at the junction of middle and occlusal third so height of contour means the area of greatest convexity so if we divide the crown into three equal half here here and here so this is the cervical third of the crown this is the middle third of the crown and this would be the occlusal third of the crown and on the me mesial side the height of contour is at the junction of middle and occlusal third so this area is the junction of occlusal and middle third so this is the area which divide occlusal and middle third so height of contour is present in here while distal outline is convex and height of contour is at the middle third so distal out outline of the crown is slightly convex and the height of contour is at the middle one third so height of contour lies around in this area so this is the area of greatest convexity 
also cervical line is irregular so the, this cervical line is somehow irregular in shape and buccal cusp is divided by shallow buccal developmental group so these two cusp they are divided by this shallow developmental group and this group it is called buccal developmental group and also all three roots are visible as you can see all three roots are visible and mesobuccal curve mesobuccal root curve distally so you can see this mesobuccal cusp it has curved toward the distal side while distobuccal curve the root is straight and lingual root is the largest so this is the largest root also the point of bifurcation of buccal root is 4 mm above the cervical line so you can see the point of bifurcation here where this two root bifurcates and distance between here to here is 4 mm so from the cervical to the point of bifurcation is 4 mm now let's study this tooth from the lingual aspect so this is the lingual surface and this is the trapezoid in shape so when we draw the outline of the crown it resembles to the trapezoid in shape and only palatal cusp are visible that is mesiolingual and distolingual cusp so in the buccal side four cusps were visible but here only palatal cusp are visible that is two cusps so this is the mesiolingual cusp this whole thing and this is the distolingual cusps only two cusps are visible and mesiolingual cusp is larger than distolingual cusp as you can see this cusp is very large than this cusp so mesiolingual cusp is larger and mesial mesial outline of the crown and mesial slope of the mesiolingual cusp is almost 90 degree that means this mesial outline of the crown and the mesial slope of the mesiolingual cusp when they join together they almost make 90 degree and both palatal cusps are divided by lingual developmental groups so just like in the buccal side there is a shallow uh, groove here and this is called lingual developmental group as it lies toward the lingual side this is called lingual developmental group and this separate two cusp that is mesio mesiolingual cusp and me distolingual cusp so this is called this is called lingual developmental group and also fifth cusp is present that is called tubercle of carabelli as you can see here cusp like structure here this is present this is the called fifth cusp and this is also called tubercle of carabelli and this is present at the mesiolingual cusp and also all three roots are visible as you can see all three roots which are visible and so this is the mesial aspect of the crown and uh, the crown is roughly trapezoid in shape so if we draw the outline of the crown this resembles to the rough trapezoid in shape and the crown is wider at the cervical area than on the occlusal area so you can see the crown it is very wide at cervical area while it is less wider at the occlusal area so it is very wide at the cervical area also buccal margin is convex at the cervical one-third and flat or concave in the middle one-third so we can see here cervical is buccal outline is convex at the cervical one-third so if we divide the crown into three parts so this would be the cervical one-third this would be the middle one-third and this is the occlusal one-third and it is slightly con convex at the cervical one-third and it is flat or concave at the middle one-third and the height of contour is at the cervical one-third so we can see the area of greatest convexity is here so here is the height of contour also lingual margin is convex throughout so this is the lingual outline of the crown and it is convex throughout and height of contour is in the middle one-third so here is the middle one-third and this is the pre this is the area where height of contour is present and also cervical line is shallow and irregular so this cervical line is shallow and it is irregular and fifth cusp is visible so you can see this this is the fifth cusp which is also called cusp of carabelli it is visible from the medial side and mesiobuccal root is broad while lingual root is narrow and long now let's see the distal aspect so this is the distal aspect so this is grossly similar to the mesial aspect so it is quite similar with the mesial aspect that the crown is trapezoid in shape and the outline and the con uh, contour area are similar with the mesial aspect and also crown taper distally so most of the buccal surface is visible that means this crown taper more distally so 
the buccal surface most of the buccal surface from here are quite visible in this from this surface and also cervical line is almost straight so the cervical line this is most almost straight not irregular and distal buccal root is narrower so this is the distal buccal root and this seem more narrower now let's see from the occlusal surface so this is the occlusal surface of the uh, maxillary molar and this is roughly rhomboidal in shape so if we draw the outline of the crown it resembles to the rhomboidal in shape and buccolingual dimension is greater than the mesiodistal so the length from the buccal to lingual is greater than from the mesial to distal so this length is greater than this length and also all the four cusps are present so uh, so the mesiolingual cusp so this is the mesiolingual cusp this is the biggest cusp present in this tooth while second biggest cusp is the mesiobuccal cusp so this is the mesiobuccal cusp and distal mesiobuccal cusp and distal lingual cusp so this is the distal, distal lingual cusp and the smallest one is the distal buccal cusp so this is the smallest cusp also it has three peat so this is the central peat present at the center here so peat is like the pinpoint st uh, structure present in the tooth so this is the central peat and this is the mesial peat here and here is the distal peat and also it has four fossas two major fossas and two minor fossas the major fossa are the central fossa present here and the center and the distal fossa present here on the distal side these are the two major fossa while two minor fossa are the mesial triangular fossa is present here on the mesial side while distal triangular fossa is present here on the distal side and the very important structure present here is the oblique crease so this is the oblique crease here and it runs obliquely on the occlusal surface so this oblique crease passes from the mesial lingual cusp to the distal distal buccal cusp so mesiolingual cusp is also called mesiopalatal cusp so it runs from the mesiopalatal cusp all the way to the distal buccal cusp so this is the oblique ridge and you can re remember this with the mnemonic m p d b so my parents divorce so i know it sounds bad but it's quite easy to remember with this kind of mnemonic so you can remember with MPDB. So it it runs from the mesiopalatal cusp to the distal buccal cusp. And in conclusion, this is the largest tooth in the maxillary arch, and it has three roots: two on the buccal and one on the lingual. And fifth cusp is present, that is cusp of Carabelli, and oblique ridge is present, which runs from mesiopalatal to the distal buccal.